of ESPN College Football. Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation 5. And welcome to the ACC on ESPN. And a football Saturday at historic Bobby Dodd Stadium. The number one team in America on the road to take on Georgia Tech. And right now, the closest competition for Trevor Lawrence for the Heisman Trophy might be his teammate, Travis Etienne. The Trevor and Travis Show takes center stage. Clemson, Georgia Tech, Papa Schusen, Dan Orlovsky, Marty Smith will join us in just a moment. How good is this team and how good are these two players? Best team in the country with the best player in the country and arguably another top five player in the country with running back Travis Etienne going against Georgia Tech that, you know, unapologetically points to Clemson as a coach and a team and says that's what it needs to look like. For Trevor Lawrence, I marvel at the fact that he wants to become great at every single thing in his game. And Travis Etienne came back to say, I'm the most complete tailback in all of college football. And Marty Smith, how surprising was it to you that he came back? Bob, good afternoon. ETN had nothing left to prove at the collegiate level, but if you talk to his coaches, I wondered why he was even still in school. And offensive coordinator Tony Elliott laughed at me when I asked this week. He said, Marty, I was very blunt with number nine. I told him, if you're cool with being a second rounder, go ahead and go. But there are things you can improve, namely being a receiver and a confident receiver. They say he's worked tirelessly to achieve that. We've seen how potent he is this season in that regard. And Dabo Sweeney told us yesterday when we chatted these days the guy thinks he's jerry rice well they have put up historic numbers already georgia tech and their defense with as stout a challenge as there is in college football take it on clemson when we come back bob bushes and dan orlovsky and marty smith bobby dodd stadium the oldest on-campus facility in college football, the site for Clemson, Georgia Tech. Tech won the toss and opted to take the football to start, and they will start at their own 25-yard line. And Dan, maybe the reason that they opted to not defer their option to the third quarter is they know this young man, Jeff Sims, is their best player, and we want our best player on the field to begin the game. As a true freshman as well, and a very explosive athlete, um, a guy that's wiry when he runs with the football. They threw a lot at him that first game of the year against Florida State. He does so well, and then they realized over the past couple weeks, okay, let's make sure we're putting him in the best position to play really good football, pair some things down in our playbook. He's a dynamic playmaker, playmaker remind a lot of people of RG3. They'll hand it off on first down. And another true freshman, Jameer Gibbs, turns the corner. They have the hope that this freshman running back and this freshman quarterback are going to spend the next at least minimum three years together turning themselves into maybe a Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne type combination. And now they'll face third down and five as Gibbs is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. I think they're both really good examples of the vision for Jeff Collins, Georgia Tech's head coach. It's like he truly believes this is the epicenter of college football moving forward and that they can become, again, another national championship program. And he goes, I got Sims. I got Gibbs. Those are two examples that recruiting will matter for us moving forward. Now it's Jemias Griffin in the backfield to the right of Sims on third down and five. Four-man rush, high throw, incomplete. Sheridan Jones had the coverage on Malachi Carter, so it looks like a three and out for Georgia Tech to start. And great coverage by Jones, just a punch on Malachi Carter's chest. Throw off that timing. Really good start for Clemson's defense. You saw the rush defense on second down be dominant and then third down get off the football field force the punt Presley Harvin kicks it away to Amari Rogers and Rogers lets it bounce sideways at about the 31 yard line well you're hoping someday Jeff Sims can become the best player in college football this guy is the best player in college football he's lost one game in his career and of course it was last season the national championship game number one on our ESPN.com Heisman watch why not He's going to be the first pick in the draft. Oh, yeah. Lock it in. Lock it in. I think that the thing that I appreciate about him the most is his self-awareness. Like, he knows exactly who he is, what he's great at, and what he needs to work on. He's admitting it. 
And he's a special player, probably more a special person. Hasn't thrown an interception in a year. And he's going to go downtown on first down. Man-to-man -man coverage and off the fingertips of Frank Ladson, who had a big drop that could have been a touchdown last week. And that one just barely missing a house call. Beautiful play call, a little flash fake. Ladson wins downfield. It's a great throw by Trevor Lawrence. That's the throw they want Ladson to go make. Talented enough to go do it. Dial it up, and it's the perfect call. Have to go make that catch. ETN's first carry. And now it will be third down and five for Clemson. And ETN with a bit of a hobble as he heads back to the huddle. And let's see if he stays in the game. He's looking over to the sideline. He's going to stay on the field. Three-man rush, long throw, back shoulder, one-on-one, -on -one, and it is on time for a first down to Cornell Powell. How good is this? How about the throw from Trevor Lawrence? Just watch the pace of the football, the trajectory. He'll take a little off of it, back shoulder, to allow Powell to track it, adjust his body, and go make that catch. Outstanding by the quarterback. And Lawrence sprints for nearly five yards. It'll be second down and five. I think that's something that Trevor Lawrence has shown this season is growth when he's a runner of the football. Now, last week against Miami, he takes a massive shot. But just the awareness, of, you're a big physical athlete. When you get five, six yards and there's a guy near you, just get out. You don't have to take those hits. Tunnel screen. Amari Rogers bottled up after a gain of a yard and a half. Well diagnosed by Trey Swilling. He's been out the last three games since opening day with an injury, so it's good to have him back. And now it's third down again for Clemson. That was a really good diagnosis by Trey Swilling. You're just seeing that two-sided screen and kind of firing his gun. Third and three, this is where Clemson can live, though, because there's so many options to, okay, take tight end 88, Brendan Galloway. Like, he's a matchup problem. What are you going to do with Travis Etienne? Are you going to put a linebacker on him? Those are the questions that Georgia Tech will have to answer today. And also, this is a run opportunity with the yardage for Clemson. Etienne spins yards after contact. He lost the football. Is it ruled a fumble? If it is, it's a Georgia Tech takeaway. And the Jackets have the football. Swilling comes up with the field. There's a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. See the spin off? Okay. Watch the punch right there. Ball out. What a start for Georgia Tech's defense. Forcing the fumble. One of the best packs in the country. Yellow Jacket ball. Only the fourth giveaway this season for Clemson's offense. Travis Etienne coughs it up, and Georgia Tech has a takeaway. And now Jeff Sims, the true freshman quarterback, back to work at his own 22-yard line. Play action on first down. Steps up. He lost the football. That was ripped away, and Georgia Tech got it back. Miles Murphy, another true freshman, was able to knock it free. And Sims bailed out by one of his offensive linemen. Murphy, left side of your screen. Watch him beat the guard. Okay, and inside that tackle with that rip because the pressure's coming outside and just the effort to get to the quarterback, the rip at the football. Great for Georgia Tech. Clemson's defensive line, so violent off the ball, so explosive off the football. Second and 18 is now going to come third down at about 15 after only a three-yard gain for Jameer Gibbs. So a conservative play call on second down and long after Sims fumbled on first down. You know, normally you're going, okay, third and 16, what would you call here? I think that Sims is such a special player, and you're always very aware of the pressure package from Clemson. Quarterback run could be something where you can catch them and be a good play. A screen that goes nowhere. 
Dante Smith immediately met by Mike Jones. Watch Mike Jones, number six, just drop down, mirror the back. He's playing on a safety possession. He just mirrors the back with the ball gets snapped, follows him like a shadow. Once that ball is thrown, drives to the tailback. Outstanding awareness by the sophomore Mike Jones. We talk about a really good defense turning a lost fumble into nothing. Yeah. They're about to get the football, you think, with really good field position after a three and out and a nine-yard net loss after the fumble recovery for Georgia Tech. Harvin to midfield, Rodgers returnable. And he gets tripped up, but well across the 50. They'll mark him down right. about the 41-yard line of Georgia Tech. Plus territory for Clemson next. College football on ABC is presented by PlayStation 5. Play has no limits. John Heisman coached at Clemson, then moved to Georgia Tech, and his namesake trophy right now, according to ESPN.com, the top two on the list, both play in the same offensive backfield to Clemson, Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. Be interesting to see what kind of a resume Justin Fields can build with the Big Ten starting so late compared to the rest. A low throw and a miss from Trevor Lawrence. Now, if you want to win the Heisman, you can't do this if you're Travis Etienne. Well, talking to defensive coordinator Andrew Thacker for Georgia Tech, it's wrap, squeeze the ball carrier, and rip. And that's exactly what they did there. Wrap up, squeeze him once you wrap, and then everybody go ripping up that football for Georgia Tech defensive. That's not the first time that Travis Etienne has seen that today. It won't be the last time. It is a focal point for the Yellow Jacket defense. Curtis Ryans and Charlie Thomas combined to knock that ball out. Here's Lawrence off play action. Bullets one to the sideline. And that is good for a first down. Getting a toe down the freshman, E.J. Williams. Th this is just a ridiculous throw. Just watch this football just get ripped to E.J. Williams. Really good awareness of where he is on the sidelines to get that foot down. That's one of those honey hole shots where you got to go up over the corner in front of that safety before both those guys close. And it's got to be on an absolute line from Trevor Lawrence. ATM for one yard. So impressive about Lawrence. It's just the power with everything that he does. Like the ball, we often hear like it jumps off his hand, or like it's just a powerful throw. And what he's added to his game, I think, since the national title is like the change of tempos of that football. Sometimes it does need a little bit of touch, and he's added that, but you can't teach that ball just getting on a frozen line to the perimeter. Here comes a blitz. Picked up, slant over the middle, Amari Rogers. First and goal, Clemson. So well done by Rogers. Watch him set. Watch him set the safety, set him down, drop him. Little face to the outside. Turn your head to the quarterback ball on your chest. He's a pro. Number three is a pro when it comes to route running. And I love the fact that Trevor Lawrence saw the pressure. He replaced where it came from with a quick throw. Shoulder, end zone, easily done for the touchdown to Cornell Powell. Look at the route, bottom of the screen, set that defender real quick. Great throw by Trevor Lawrence. Outstanding body control by Powell. Saw the back shoulder on third down before. See it down in the red zone for a touchdown. The 11th touchdown pass of the season for Trevor Lawrence. And the first cut this year by Cornell Powell. A moment ago, there was a big momentum-changing play in this game. Remember, Georgia Tech got a fumble recovery. Clemson, not so fast. Can Georgia Tech respond? They will start at their own 25-yard line. Our first chance to say 
Good afternoon to Kevin Nagandi. Bob, good afternoon. We got breaking news coming in. Alabama head coach Nick Saban has been cleared to coach in today's game against Georgia following a third negative COVID-19 test. The school making that announcement. The 68-year-old is expected to be on the sidelines tonight in Tuscaloosa for that top three showdown. Bob, Dan? That's great news. I mean, obviously yeah. anyone Coach Saban's age or older, you hear the diagnosis as... Sims on quarterback run, breaks a tackle in the backfield, gets back to the line of scrimmage. He said he was asymptomatic all the way through, and if you get three negative tests all 24 hours apart, well, they presume that that is a false positive that you received a few days ago, and so Coach Saban will be out there when number two meets number three later on tonight as Jameer Gibbs weaves his way for about three yards. And that's, this is the SEC's way of handling coronavirus and their testing and, and whatnot. Their protocol and process, Alabama did a great job with it, of following it. Coach Saban did a great job with it. And at the end of the day, this is awesome that he's healthy, feeling good, and gets the coach's football team. Here comes a blitz on third down. A screen behind it to Gibbs. He's got a first down and more. Nice patience shown by Jeff Sims to wait for the rush to come through and finds Jameer Gibbs. Pressure off the left, right? See, Spectre drop out, number 10. Great patience by Sims to allow Gibbs to leak out. Huge conversion for them. Third down, I think that's got to be their formula. When you get into those third down situations, just roll the dice, anticipate pressures coming. How many different ways can you throw the ball to 21? Play action. Sims, he's going to look up top. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's got Jalen Camp. Touchdown. Camp only seven catches in a red shirt shortened season last year in four games. He's already got 15 catches and two touchdowns this year. And that is a huge one for the Yellow Jackets. How can you affect certain secondaries? You're going to see a deep cross by this receiver up top. That's going to take that safety. Let's play it and show the route by Jalen Camp. Beautiful job of motion, getting that safety up. Freeze it. Jalen Camp, now you have to beat that one-on-one -on -one matchup. When you win, set him on the outside, you have the whole field to cross. That's how this touchdown happens. That safety takes the crosser. Beautiful throw by Jel Jeff Sims. Jalen Camp, you got to win on your route. Outstanding job. Play design and execution. Watch safety come down. Great job by Sims, and I love the throw. Get it out early on one hitch. Understand you can bring him across the field, Jalen Camp, for the Yellow Jacket touchdown. Jeff Sims on tape this past week. You think his future is every bit as bright as Jeff Collins does? Oh, yeah. He's a... If, if he stays continuing to grind on his work, and fingers crossed, he stays healthy, Jeff Sims is a future superstar for Georgia Tech. Not a good college quarterback, a superstar, because he's big, he's physically smart, great work ethic, intangibles, loves the game. He's going to be a superstar for Georgia Tech. NJ Dixon on the run back and spins and stiff arms his way to about the 16-yard line before he's driven out. We'll call it the 17, and we'll check it again with Kevin. Bob, time now for our protection spotlight, brought to you by Allstate. We'll take a look at a great touchdown play in Syracuse. Look at the blocking for Shedro Lewis, and bye-bye. Shedro -bye. Lewis. No win the track meet. 75 yards of the house. Liberty, two-and-a-half points. Road favorites. They tied up seven apiece. Bob, Ben. Syracuse taking her L at home. No problem. I know it's 7-7, seven seven, but you're not going to get me to apologize for Syracuse potentially taking an L at home. Uh, thank you. Just bitter Connecticut alums. It's, I love it. Listen, anyone who said no to me when it came to recruitment in high school, I want them to lose every game. Trevor Lawrence. He's going to look up top. He's got a man behind the defense. Once again, it's Amari Rogers, and he'll go the distance. Anything you can do, I can do better.
traditional concept. You're going to get the tight end to come up. Hook. That's going to grab that safety. This is going to be Amari Rodgers on that deep post. Once that safety jumps up on that tight end, right there, that safety jumps up. Amari Rodgers got outside leverage. Easy win for Clemson offense. Listen, too talented. Too good of a football team to make it that easy on this offense. Hey, T. Higgins is gone. Justin Ross, he's out at least for this season with a congenital spine fusion in his neck. Those are NFL-level wide receivers that are gone. Don't worry. This is but a traditional. has got more. Yeah, this is a traditional play. That's called like Fox X, Fox 2 X and Y hook, where you just sit that tight end down in front of a safety, and then you got outside leverage on Amari Rodgers, and that's easy for him. Watch the patience off the line of scrimmage. Great eyes by Trevor Lawrence. So play fake, confirm what I'm seeing. And then great trajectory. Again, beautiful air on that throw. But that's too easy for 16 and 3. I think 3's route running is, is so special. And we kind of box him in as a, a slot receiver, a possession guy. But when you can run routes and you know how to set defenders, meaning when you get up to them, where to lean, where to place your feet, the way to nod, it doesn't really matter how fast you are. You can win strictly off your route running ability. Amari Rogers does it really well. Let's see how Georgia Tech responds again. They recover a fumble, give it right back to Clemson and give up a short field touchdown. Then they respond with a deep ball. They give up a deep ball, so now it's back to the true freshman Jeff Sims and kick off week six with Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN tomorrow before Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers square off on inside look at what life is like backing up the game's great quarterbacks. And then Monday Night Football, Tyler Murray and the Cardinals take on the Cowboys in Dallas 8 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. The Cowboys, they responded very well in the immediate aftermath of the Dak Prescott injury. As Georgia Tech goes to work, Sims, he may have had the ball taken away on a low snap. Clemson's got it. A disaster for Georgia Tech. K.J. Henry gets a gift on the low center exchange that Sims couldn't handle. Low and left for that quarterback snap in the shotgun. K.J. Henry just explodes off the ball and gets to it. You can see Sims trying to gather it right there, and K.J. Henry's just right there. Easy pickings for him. Just a mistake you can't make against this team. You play with such a small margin for error when you play a team as good as Clemson, and Jeff Collins' team just gave Dabo Sweeney's group a gift. So a red zone chance on the turnover. Shovel pass. And grinding his way for about a yard and a half is Davis Allen. This is why the bad snap happens, right? Clemson will always put someone on the center's head, right there. So that center has to snap the ball, get his hands on his guy, and block him. Now watch the ball. It's going to go low left right there. That's exactly why. That's why Clemson is so willing, and teams are so willing to put someone on the center's head every snap. Because it's challenging for that guy to think, okay, I got to make this snap, and I got to move, and I got to get my feet right and get hands on that defender. It's very difficult, and that's the advantage of a 3-4 defense. It's a negative play. Wes Jackson was able to get through to Trevor Lawrence. He beats Travis Etienne. Watch Jackson shoot the gap between the guard and the center. That's Tra Travis Etienne's guy. And it just happened so quickly. This is called timing a blitz. Don't give it away because then the back will be ready for it. Great job by Quez Jackson. What's the challenge there for a running back as well? You want to sell play action, but still get in front of the quarterback for blitz pickup. Oftentimes, it's just abort your fake. You know, your job, number one, in that situation is protection over play fake. But the, the fact that he couldn't get there is because Quez Jackson timed it up so well. Lawrence out of the pocket. Third down and 17. He's going to try and run for it. And he will get the field goal group, some real estate. Smart decision. It's the right play for Trevor Lawrence. I'd love to say that he could force something in, but it's the right decision. And Dabo should go kick this football. You, you just got that big turnover. You guarantee yourself getting into points. Fourth and seven is too much of a risk right now. That's a huge win, though, for Georgia Tech. No doubt. To give the ball away in the red zone and hold this offense to a B.T. Potter field goal attempt.
30 yards out. Clemson is able to grab three points off the takeaway, and they have a 10-point lead. Well, later today, 11th ranked Texas A&M in Starkville to take on Mike Leach and the Cowbells. Mississippi State hosting the Aggies at 4 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Jimbo Fisher, that was some kind of win. Really the first signature win, it seems, at A&M for Jimbo when they took down Florida. I think a lot of us have been waiting for it, right? Especially with Kellen Mond, that quarterback, such a, you know, a really talented player. And then Jimbo has come with such expectation for them to kind of have that win with Kellen playing so well, especially later in that football game. It only takes one, right? It only takes one for a program to go, okay, we're here, we are who we think we want to be type thing, and I'm excited to watch them continue to play for the rest of the year. Venables ready to send his defense back out there against the Tech offense that went up top a couple of possessions ago. It'll be a touchback once again. George Tech offensively, it's like, stop hurting yourself. I know you're a young football team, but the fumble, the negative yardage plays, like if they just can be productive on first down, get the ball to perimeter on first down, I do think they've got some matchups. Gibbs, Amari and Brown, like there's some matchups, but they gotta just continue to get the play started. Get the play started against this Clemson defense. Sims, incomplete. Try to slip one underneath to Dylan Devaney. Well, this is an offensive transformation at Georgia Tech. Obviously, Jeff Collins going from the triple option to the struggles last season to now getting a really dynamic quarterback in Jeff Sims. You can see the improvement. And the, the, a big improvement is up front as well. Their, their offensive line, again, going from this crazy transition of the triple option to what they are now like, much bigger, much more fundamentally sound, stronger. So they're up front has, has had a great jump in development as well. Gibbs, it'll be third down and four after the check-in with Kevin. Bob, this studio update brought to you by AT&T 5G. Derek King off a, off a rough game against Clemson, bouncing back early to Cam Harris, 35 yards. 7-0 Miami over Pitt. Once again, our top story, Nick Saban has been cleared to coach tonight against Georgia. And here comes a blitz for Clemson. Under pressure, Sims tries to turn the corner and can't do it. Hard to beat the speed of this Clemson defense as he was brought down by Andrew Booth. They're trying to play with tempo and kind of beat the call from Clemson. They get it in. Here comes the pressure. Sims does a good job of sitting in the pocket. Okay, nothing's there. Let me go. But then there's the reaction by Booth. You know, he's playing in his zone, allowing that mesh to happen. The quarterback commits the run, let me go get him. So it's not only the play call, it's the discipline of execution by the Clemson defense. Rodgers up against the sideline, out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Well, RPOs, we hear about it all the time. You think Trevor Lawrence might be the best at it. Absolutely. It's a big part of their offense. Now, first of all, watch the defender on the left. This is going to be a run and a pass at the same time. Top right screen is going to tell you how quickly this decision gets made and how fast that ball gets to travel. Bottom left, 19 yards. Folks, listen. That is half a second, and the ball goes 19 yards, and that's from the decision to pull the handoff and make the throw. That's not the whole play. I mean, that's half a second. That's why it's such a big part of their offense, because he's incredible at it in the, the way he, fast he gets through it mentally, but the power of the throw is remarkable. Uh, this time he hands it off to Lin J. Dixon. And Dixon picks up about five yards on first down. Could you do that? Half a second, throw the ball 20 yards? I can't get out of bed in under five minutes. What could I do in half a second? Yeah, uh, well... <laughs> But I think, you know, we, we minimize the RPO, the run-pass option. We think it's such an easy play. This kid does it just at, at a, a 10 out of 10 level in every aspect. 
for some of those snap throws, and this one's dropped by Latson, is he even bothering to find the laces? Now the ball's in his hand and gone so quick. Yeah, I mean, that's that's sometimes we, we when quarterbacks go to the combine, we're like, oh, hand size, let's make fun of it. But that's why, in an aspect where it would matter, because, you know, you're pulling that ball out, you don't have the laces like that ball you've got to be able to grip it and rip it and so that's why some of the physical attributes that come into play are such a big deal blitz picked up and the first down picked up marty as well by trevor lawrence guys we're out of superlatives to describe trevor lawrence and just how unbelievable his command is of this offense at clemson and andrew thacker the defensive coordinator at georgia tech told us this week 16 is as talented as any college football player i've ever seen as he throws an interception right on cue marty the announcer jinx works to perfection as amari walton off the pick brings it back into plus territory and georgia tech has the football back as trevor lawrence throws his first interception in a year the pressure is part of it but i just want everyone to watch it about the 34 yard line watch the punch by the corner on the receiver just watch that throws him off right there right punch right there that just throws off his timing his steps for power just for a second terrible decision by trevor lawrence i'm not saying the pressure doesn't matter but the, everybody doing their part for that defense is huge. And that punch just made that receiver just a second slow, outstanding defense in kind of in all 11 aspect by Georgia Tech. Here's Jameer Gibbs breaking tackles. He picks up seven. Well, that pressure from Antonius Clayton forced the first interception for Trevor Lawrence since last season at Louisville. By the way, which broadcast crew called that game last That's year? Us, Clemson right. at Louisville? Yeah, that would be us. You're welcome. Yeah, Clemson fans, we are the cooler, and we apologize. Bunch set at the bottom of their screen, and Sims will roll the other way on quarterback run and get tracked down well short of the first down. The third down and two and a half close to three. That was a great play by Nolan Turner open the, in the open field. He's got to shed the block of Gibbs and then go make the tackle. So a really good job of open field, shed block and tackling. Third and two here, like, they, you see the space that they've created? Like, this should be quarterback run in some aspect. A little flip shovel pass. And now what do you do if you're Georgia Tech? I would think this would be four down territory, knowing you can't trade field goals with Clemson, and this is a long one to begin with. <laughs> this is remarkable. I mean, the decision, that, that could end up really bad. That could end up really bad, but you know what? I love the instincts by Sims. They should run to the football and, and try to get some snapped off here. Got to go for it, and they will. And they won't get it. Jameer Gibbs brought down for a loss of at least a couple of yards. Valen Spector came through and helped it support on fourth down. And Brent Venable's defense gets a takeaway on down. Just to change the line of scrimmage. I mean, Pickney just pushes Ryan Johnson back. Fourth down recovered recover by a player other than the fumbler. It has been returned to the spot. Just a the dominant defensive line Clemson. performance by Clemson right there on that play. Now, I would have loved, I loved to tempo to the line of scrimmage, but Ten's a special player. Like, he's got to have the option to keep the football there. Got to have the option to go, okay, zone read. If I like that defender closing, like, I can go one-on-one -on -one out in the perimeter because you're not going to push Clemson's defensive line around tackle to tackle. Yeah, that was going to be my question, as this should take us to the end of the first quarter, you would think. Trevor Lawrence back to hand one to ETN. He gets to the sideline and picks up four. Regardless of the execution, just the general philosophy of calling a play for your offense in short yardage. You're Georgia Tech against Clemson, and you think you're going up the middle. Know thyself, right? And, and a big part, again, I love the tempo, but in that moment, that's where you want to be like, I caught you off guard. Not with my physicality, but with my mind. You know, think of, I'm, you're, you're thinking something else, and I'm just going to go just a step further. in spite of a couple of giveaways. Cornell Powell with a touchdown. The answer by Georgia Tech. We'll be back after this message. A word from our ABC stations. 
ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation 5. As we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Bob Wachusen, Dan Orlovsky, Marty Smith. Starting the second quarter. Near midfield for Clemson, Travis Etienne. Will pick up about four yards. Another update to Kevin. Bob is good in Knoxville after throwing a pick six earlier. Tennessee's Jared Garantano does it again, Mark. He does it again, Kev, because he's forcing this ball downfield when linebackers are deep in zone coverage. Check that ball down. Damon Davis, 85 yards, 14-0 Kentucky. Once again, our top story today, Nick Saban has been cleared to coach tonight against Georgia. 14-0 Kentucky. Two pick sixes. The fighting and Jacob Tammies are ecstatic. Third down. And a long two close to three here for Trevor Lawrence. A bullet to Rogers. It's a midfield and easy third down conversion. That's an easy concept for Lawrence and Amari Rogers to have. That's a choice route. You tell Amari Amari Rogers, like, defender inside, you break out. Defender outside, you break in. He's such a smart, cerebral player. He understands the tempo of that route. Just an easy catch and throw for both him and Trevor Lawrence. ETN. Two-yard game. David Curry and on the stop for Georgia Tech. A really good job, Georgia Tech defensively so far in the run game of, and Bob, you heard me say this all the time, like playing vice football. Somebody's got to stay outside, somebody's got to stay inside. We both have to do our jobs for it to work. And you can see when the plays are successful for them, it's the discipline of the execution by their defense leverage-wise. Four-man rush. And a pitch and catch first down again. As Lawrence is able to find E.J. Williams, a true freshman that went to the same high school as Justin Ross. And Dabo Sweeney thinks he's Justin Ross before speed. That's pretty scary. He calls him freaky. Just freaky athletic. And if he's faster, if he is faster than Justin Ross, then that would be an accurate description. Beautiful communication. You can see pressures coming at the bottom of the screen. Great job by Trevor Lawrence. A little pitch fake and a wide open seam route for Davis Allen. The tight end finds pay dirt. What a fake by Trevor Lawrence. Boy, it looked like he froze the entire defense with that fake pitch. All right, this is going to be the tight end that leaks out right here. Now, as we play it, watch the play fake by Trevor Lawrence. Now, freeze it. That little flash fake right there gets that linebacker to flow that way. Here comes that back. He's going to flow that way. That's going to allow him to leak right down the field. Touchdown, Clemson. 34-yard touchdown strike for Davis Allen after Braden Galloway was the favorite target for Trevor Lawrence against Miami. He is feeding his tight ends these last two weeks. Tallahassee at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. And, of course, the news of the day, Dan Orlovsky. Nick Saban cleared to coach Alabama against Georgia tonight. Huge deal. It's great for Alabama. That football game tonight is going to be strength on strength. Bama's offense, Georgia's defense. Dante Smith brought down at the 18-yard line. Versatility to this Clemson offense. Yeah, first of all, I love the type of throw for Cornell Powell. The back shoulder fade. Just watch the love on the football. Just take a little bit off it. Beautiful play placement that allows the receiver to adjust. Okay, pressure coming off. Replace the pressure with that slant inside. I love the throw right on the chest. And then how about the touchdown? A little toss fake. Get those defenders to overrun. And the throw is absolutely perfect. From Lawrence to Allen, Clemson's offense, minus a few mistakes, has been flawless so far. This is the seventh time Georgia Tech has had the football. As Jameer Gibbs will pick up two and a half yards. That's their 19th total play. This is their seventh possession. They have not had a drive go more than four plays. Their only touchdown drive was a one-play strike to Jalen Camp. They would probably do well to keep their defense on the bench at least a little bit here if they can put together a march. Yeah, they need to get a couple plays, some momentum for their offense going. You can see right now, like, Sims looking to the sideline. Okay, we know what the defensive structure is. Do we like a play? But this is what's going to happen. Clemson defensively is going to change the look that they showed you. Play action. 
Again, he's going to take a deep shot. He's got a man behind the defense. But he overshoots on Marion Brown as we check in with Kevin. Bob, over on ESPN, Auburn at South Carolina off of Bo Nix, INT, the drive. Kevin Harris barreling through South Carolina on the board. 9-7 right now, Auburn. Once again, our top story. Nick Saban has been cleared to coach tonight against Georgia. Bob, Dan? Alongside Dan Orlovsky, I'm Bob Wischusen. Marty Smith is with us as well. Perfect day for football in Atlanta. But a third down and eight, a less than perfect situation for a freshman quarterback against this defense. Look at Clemson's linebackers, both up in the A-gaps. Now you're thinking pressure. What's your plan for pressure? How do you get the ball out of the quarterback's hands, and how do you protect them? He's going to try to protect himself with his legs. It keeps the play alive. What a move by Jeff Sims. And then gets walloped. And out come the flags. Alan Spector may have lowered his head. This could be a targeting foul on Sims on the slot. Let's see if Spectre gets called. Personal foul. Targeting. Number 10, defense. The play is under further review. Great play by Sims. Spectre with a big hit. We'll see what they say. They're going to review it. We'll come back with the decision. Bob smiles for Bale Inspector because the targeting flag has been picked up, Dan, and rightfully so. Yeah, I think this is the right call. You can see he kind of keeps his eyes up. He's not leading with the crown of the helmet. There's no launch or lunge. It's just that Sims' feet get taken out from underneath him. That's why it looks the way it does. I like the way that was officiated. At first glance, you thought maybe crown of the helmet, but there also has to be an indicator of targeting right. to go that along launch, with right? crown of the helmet. A crouch with an upward thrust, a launch, and that was a very quick review by the booth of Ari Rogers with a fair catch for Clemson. Coming up at 4 Eastern on the ACC Network, Virginia takes on Wake Forest. And at 8, number 23, Virginia Tech hosting 3-1 Boston College at Lane Stadium. If you don't have the ACC Network, go to GetACCN.com for instant access. I think that Virginia Tech-Boston College game will be a good game. Yeah, Virginia Tech last week, good team. Boston College halfly led, good team. And Trevor Lawrence already moving into a tie for fourth in ACC history with... Chris Wenke with the touchdown passes he has thrown today. How about the run? Just picking up two yards. Hard work and numbers for Travis Etienne. He is tough to bring down, and that guy is tough to defend. For Clemson offensively, it's it's oh, oh, they've had some really, really explosive plays, but can they go on a methodical drive? For Tony Elliott, their play call, like, can you put together a drive that you feel really good about right now? ETN moves the pile. Two yards shy of the first down. The third down, Marty. Guys, when we talked to Davo Sweeney yesterday, he lauded his first unit on the offensive line, said, in fact, it might be the best first group he's ever had as the head coach at Clemson. Now, their depth is not what they've had in the past. They can't run players in and out the way they have in the past, but this first group, he said, is absolutely stellar. I think a big deal of that is right guard Will Putton. He was the only kind of question mark for them moving forward. Was, like, was he going to be able to take the jump that he has? Lawrence to ETN. Down the sideline goes Travis ETN. Not just a third down conversion, but a chunk play to midfield. Beautiful job. Watch the receiver coming from the left side of the screen. Just kind of create traffic on Carpenter right there. Good job by Lawrence of getting that ball out in front and then ETN getting his head around. Really good understanding that you're going to get man-to-man -man defense. You create traffic by other people and find where the leverage of the matchup is for the quarterback. That's Travis ETN's first catch of the day. But Dabo Sweeney said that's where his game has made the biggest improvement as Lawrence rolls to his right. Fires across his body and it's knocked away. Intended for E.J. Williams. You know, Dabo Sweeney told us about Travis Etienne. As a freshman, I would not have thrown him the football. And even after last season, 
But he had the decision to make about, do I want to go pro? And as Marty Smith talked about earlier, if I'm a second-round pick, that's not really my goal. Right. Well, if you want to be a first-round pick, where do you improve? That's where you improve. And he has gone to a completely different place as a pass catcher. Swing pass to Lin J. Dixon. He gets a couple of blocks. And he's a yard away from a first down. In the NFL right now, it is about being a pass catching back. You know, look at all the good NFL offenses right now with Aaron Jones in Green Bay, McCaffrey in Carolina, Alvin Kamara with the Saints. You have to be a pass catching threat. And ETN has become that this year. And now what does it do for Clemson's offense? It forces everybody to not just commit to stopping the run against them. They have to honor the whole field. But so it helps their team now, but it's also kind of changing the viewpoint of him as an NFL prospect for organizations. Lynn J. Dixon picks up the first down easily. Five-yard gain on third down and one, Marty. And ETN's progression as a receiver, Sweeney told us, has also impacted Trevor Lawrence. He said Trevor's trust in what ETN can do as a receiver now makes them even more dangerous. He said, look, there are times now when we can send everybody on a go route and just dump it right down to nine on purpose and sit back and watch the show. But then also if they like don't cover the go route really good, it just becomes a touchdown for your <laughs> offense. Like imagine that. Must be nice. <laughs> counter handoff to Dixon now the only player at Clemson to average fewer yards per carry than ETN is, is Dixon Travis ETN's going to try and retire as a Clemson player averaging seven yards per carry for his career Lynn J. Dixon's number two in Clemson history right on his heels what did Dabo say to us yesterday that sometimes you just got to remember that the, the other guys are there you know like they that's been a big part of their, this program is like making sure that people get reps and he even said that about Lynn J. Dixon. Like, we got to remember that th that guy's over there, too, as well. And sometimes it's okay to give him the football because there's really not this massive drop-off. And it speaks to the depth of a program and the years and years of big-time recruiting. Play action. Lawrence fires one over the middle. Wide open. Amari Rogers leaps a man looking for the pylon. And he's out of bounds at the one. job by Amari Rogers to continue to finish athletically. The hot rover almost getting into that end zone. Look at the eyes. Okay, look right. Confirm, look left. Now step back and find Rogers crossing the field. That's, that's what it's called post-snap recognition. Understanding and, and listening to your eyes and just confirming the things you see. Yes, great offensive line protection, but a quarterback has to know what the problem of the defense is when it comes to coverage and where to attack it. And Trevor Lawrence, that's the perfect example of it. Wait, they got Pinkney and Bruzzy in the backfield. Yeah, that's some big guys. That's a true freshman defensive tackle of 300 pounds lining up a tailback. I'd call time out, too. Young men that looked like they were born to play quarterback. And Trevor Lawrence under center. First and goal at the one-yard line. And the big boys are back out there. Ryan Brzee, the true freshman defensive tackle. He'll be the fake. Niles Pinckney instead a 300-pound defensive tackle. Takes the handoff at fullback. Boy, try tackling him. They can't. It's a touchdown. back with that group with Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins, that yeah. whole squad for Dabo Sweeney, or now the current defensive front group. He allows those guys to have some fun and occasionally thinking. score. And I think that's why, the extra point. that's why that stuff matters, though. Like, you, you ask so much of your players and you reward them. Look at the celebration. Like, I can't, I can't do that celebration, but that's good stuff by Clemson as a program to just can have some fun with it, right? Work, work really hard and have high expectations, but have a lot of fun. It helps when you move people like that. And then what do you tell the linebacker? Like, hey, man, go stop those 300 pounds. Here comes the dance. I wish I knew the name of this dance. I should. <laughs> it almost looks, there's a little Merton Hanks in there, but. Clemson fans, let us know what the name of that dance is.
sorts of offense put up by the Tigers here in the first half. We still have seven minutes to go in the second quarter. And it's a 24-point lead. And it will come out to the 25-yard okay. line again for Georgia Tech. Once again, we check in with Kevin. Bob, let's go back to Columbia. Bo Nix, how about this? Uh, just throw the jump ball because you know who's going to come down with it. It is Seth Williams. That is my plays later that would set up a touchdown tank bigsby going in 16-7 auburn on esp and our top story nick saban has been cleared to coach tonight against georgia and dan if a big man celebrates like that we call that in the studio the booger dance <laughs> that's what booger does when he makes double bogey with the boogie down high throw pulled in on the sideline by jalen camp but he was out of bounds it'll be second down and ten Again, great job by Nolan Turner, right? Your, your job is to get depth to the sideline. That's what forces that throw to just kind of extend camp and just be a little bit out of bounds. And I'm thinking for Georgia Tech offensively. You, you got to, like, take your eyes off the scoreboard, okay, and just let's continue to develop some of our young players. Let's call some plays that they're comfortable with and force some execution upon them no matter what the situation of the game is. Sims directing traffic, becomes schoolyard football, throws it to the sideline. He's got two receivers in the exact same place, and a big collision out of bounds. Darian Kendrick gets up wobbly as well at cornerback for Clemson. I think he's trying to tell Gibbs to go downfield, and I think Gibbs turns downfield, and then that collision from the receiver that's down there as well. And Malachi Carter... And Jameer Gibbs run right into each other. Third down and ten. Sims, pocket collapsing. Down he goes. No chance to escape the rush. Tyler Davis gets the sack. Look at Sims, okay, like you feel like there's so much chaos around you. It's really only a four-man rush, but all those moving parts, all the color that you see crossing your face or moving around the field, it just gets you uneasy in the pocket. And get a quarterback uncomfortable and uncontinent in third-down situations. Amari Rodgers with a fair catch. Clemson back to the offense with a big lead. They are rattling Jeff Sims. Is one of the best quarterbacks in college I have ever seen. This dude has everything. Size, arm, accuracy. He's a winner. I think he's got a lot of grit to him. It's nice to be recognized. The only award that I really care too much about is the national championship. Well, Joe Burrow may have had the best college season we've ever seen Correct. last year for LSU. Certainly Ed Orgeron brings that to mind as Trevor Lawrence goes back to work on first and ten. And finds a pitch and catch out to the flat to Cornell Powell. But when you think about the totality, Dan Orlowski, of Trevor Lawrence with a flag down on the play, I don't think I can remember a college quarterback maybe going back to John Elway that is going to go into the draft being more well thought of by the entirety of the NFL than Trevor Lawrence. There is no foul for unnecessary roughness. First down. Well, you know, Dabo touched on that a little bit this week, and I agree with him. Okay, so if we're going to go, okay, you want to play quarterback in the NFL physically, are you big enough? Yes. Is your arm powerful and strong enough? Yes. Can you change arm angles? Yes. Can you throw with touch and anticipation and accuracy and ball placement? Yes. All right, so nowadays in the NFL, it's about playmaking at the quarterback position. Screen here to Joseph Ngata, and he is able to pick up about seven yards, but looking for extra, he coughs the football up. Really on the field is a fumble, recovered by the defense. First down, Georgia Tech. Third giveaway here in the first half for Clemson. Just a quick wide receiver screen, Ngata, somebody that they're counting on, he's finally healthy. Spin, spin, we talked about it. Wrap, squeeze, and rip. He may have been down, huh? and may be worth another look to see if the elbow was down. The ruling on the, the ball previous play, out. the fumble recovered by the defense, is under further review. Jamin Brooks came up with the recovery. The question is, does he still have control of this football when the left elbow hits? Or is that ball coming free just before the left elbow? 
hits the ground. Now again, they ruled it a fumble on the field, so that means it has to be indisputable that he has complete control of the football when the elbow hits, Dan. What do you think? Hard to tell from that angle. That's a tough angle. The ruling on the field, obviously, to your point, matters, but I think the left elbow... Hey, there's control, 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 control. I, I think the left elbow is down before that ball looks to be out of control from his hands. I'm looking at the stripe of the football, the laces of the football, the point of the football. None of it ever moves until after that left elbow hits the ground. So with a 31-7 lead for Clemson. The hope for Georgia Tech is that they're going to get a takeaway here, but it certainly looks as if the elbow hit before the ball was lost by Joseph Ngata. So we're expecting this may go back over to the Tigers. That'll put Trevor Lawrence right back out on the field. If you're Georgia Tech and you're thinking, okay, do we have the football? Your mindset needs to be, let's go take a shot. You know, that, that's worked for you offensively. You've got to go find a way to take a shot. If you, this is an actual fumble. I still think this call is going to get overturned and this will be Clemson ball. But if you're Georgia Tech, you've got to kind of start framing your mind offensively of what shot you want to take. After further review, the runner was down with the ball to plus 48 yard line. And we place at that spot would be second down. So that puts perhaps the best playmaker in college football right back out. Yeah, the that's field. the point we were making before, right? Quarterbacking in the NFL right now is more about playmaking than just your execution of the position. And so he has all these physical traits, and he's got these playmaking traits athletically, and then is, is, are you smart enough? Do you understand coverage, protections, all those things? ETN picks up a first down. And is there a box that he doesn't check when you look at the progression of his career from freshman year to now? That's the, that's the whole point. It's like, no, there is whatever box you want to create, if you want to continue to create these boxes of what you need at the quarterback position, he checks them all. He checks them all. Great decision maker, hardworking, leadership, intangibles, grind. Do you love football? Like, there's so many things that this kid, and Bob, he's not just good at them. He's not good at it. He's ridiculously elite at all of that. ETN, Marty, picks up seven. There's also the fact that without Trevor Lawrence's conviction to play football this fall, we very well might not be here today. And in fact, college football might not be being played at all. Devo Sweeney told us he's on a board. And back during the pandemic, he got an email. And in that email, it said we might not be playing football. He said he hit reply all. Oh, this is ridiculous. He said, y'all go home with my players and tell them they're better off there than they are here. The mental health of these young men is very important. Lawrence over the middle for completion. What is that, Bob? 15 yards? At least. J.C. Chalk. I'm not a play-by-play play guy, brother. I'm trying. No, I, I thought you handled that well. I was expecting you were going to give me a little J.C. Chalk breakdown as well. But back to Trevor Lawrence. Thank you, gentlemen. So Devo said he stood on that email the whole practice. He had told his team in June, nobody has to come back here. Your scholarship is going to be good. Your job is going to be good. I want no fear here. And I want you to know, if you want to come back, I need to know it. And he said, after that practice, he walked up to his team, and Full he start. said, Number I'm going to challenge you. Offense. How many of you guys want to be here and play? And he said, after that practice, Lawrence walked up to him and said, Coach, I got this. The next day, the We Want to Play movement began, and it became a watershed for this season's college football uh, season. He said, Lawrence doesn't have to do that. He's going to be the number one pick in the draft. It's his love for college football that was the catalyst. And over and over again, we've heard him say, to Marty's point, I am just trying to soak this in and enjoy the moment. A little shuffle pass forward on the trick play. Springs a run down the sideline by Brandon Spector. And he's all the way down in a goal-to-go situation. And yet, he really seems to appreciate, does Trevor Lawrence, how special a place Clemson is and how special a time he's having soaking up probably what is his last year of college football. I just marvel at the maturity, right? The, the, I'll continue to go back to the awareness. But the maturity of understanding how awesome it is to be the quarterback at Clemson right now, you know, and, and you're not going to get this back. You and I both know the NFL is a different animal. It's a different world. And when you're talking about... 
Lawrence on a rollout, whips one into the end zone, touchdown Frank Lasser. I mean, rolling to your left is hard for a right-handed quarterback. And for him to just do that and just throw an absolute line. A good player, man. He's a really good player. We talk about the maturity. We talk about the leadership. Marty tells us this great story about leadership. He's going to be the number one pick in the draft. You know what's going to be more important than the on-the-field talent is the leadership that he's going to need to bring to an organization that's trying to flip from really bad. Four touchdown passes here in the first half for Trevor Lawrence. And this one shows an even more expanded skill set. Look at the flip. Can, I mean, the flip, like the flip of the hips and the shoulders and then the drive of the football. Watch. This is how it's done, folks. Right-handed quarterback. Turn. Get your shoulder, that left shoulder pointed forward, and then drive that strike. This is why he's such a big-time prospect. Get those hips moving left, but square the upper body up and just throw that rip. As Marty talked about, and as you reinforced as well, the leadership with the We Want to Play movement, but he also was the point man, along with Darian Rencher, during all of the social injustice issues that permeated our country and certainly infected college sports very much back in the spring. And he and Rencher got together. They led the on-campus march. They led the social justice movement. He was one of the speakers in front of a, a large gathering on Clemson's campus. So... Now, Trevor Lawrence, he, he checks, as we said, all of those boxes. Not only the tangibles, but also the intangibles, as he was not afraid to use his voice to try and support his teammates. And I asked him, hey, what did you learn through all this about yourself when it comes to leadership? And he said, if you don't act, it's just words. I couldn't have done that at 20 years old. I just couldn't. I, I wouldn't, wasn't able to do that. But just his... Oh, his willingness to do that, his want to to do that, and to put himself out there in a way, you know, to put yourself out there in a way um, is something that, as talented as he is, he's a significantly better person and, play, and, and leader of this team. And I love the shirt. Like, I, we need change. This isn't, this is something that he's passionate about and he cares about for, for his teammates. Jeff Sims off play action, throws an interception. Using a stiff arm down the sideline, Nolan Turner. And once again, it is goal to go for Clemson. Nolan Turner had one power five offer coming out of high school, and it was from Clemson. His father, Kevin, played with Davo Sweeney back in Alabama. And then in 2016, he passed away, a victim of ALS. Oh, if he could see his son now. Great discipline, though. We've mentioned his name a couple times with discipline. Just watch him play where he's supposed to be. Hang where you're supposed to be. Hang. You're not supposed to be in that alley, that hash. Be in between the quarterback and that slant receiver. And if you are, the quarterback will throw it right to you. It, there, there's, there's something to be said for being fundamentally sound. Discipline with your eyes. Do your job. Perfect example has been Nolan Turner all half. ETN inside the three-yard line. I think that sometimes gets lost in the Clemson defense because they're so exotic and talented. They're also very, very well-coached and tied together. Everyone doing their job for that defense. ETN bouncing it to the pylon. Easy done for the touchdown. So Travis Etienne, his 40th career game with a touchdown, which means he is one behind Donnell Pumphrey for the most games in FBS history. To have at least one touchdown moved into second place when he got by Tim Tebow a couple of scores ago. Not too bad. 48th career game and the 40th. <laughs> he has scored a touchdown. He's only played eight games in his career at Clemson where he hasn't found the end zone, either through the air or on the ground. I wish, or I, could, both. Like, I, wish I could find words to, to kind of describe it, you know, like incredible, dominant, remarkable. That's why I'll fight you guys that, that you guys... You, 
I think he's a first round pick. Look, I agree, and he's moved now past Dalvin Cook, trying to track down Ted Brown, and if he stays healthy, he certainly will for the most career rushing yards in ACC history. So between Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne, it's hard to imagine at the end of this season how many different records those two guys will hold in tandem. They'll be atop the record book just about everywhere. Special players, I think they're, you know, we were talking to Dabo about each team, right? And he's like, oh, you know, everyone wants to do these self-scouts on us and that we're giving the ball or getting the ball to Travis Etienne too much. And he said, yeah, no, duh, because if we don't, we're idiots. It, and he just laughed about it, saying, yeah, I, I, we understand that we get him the ball a ton. He's that good of a player. Well, it's time for today's AFLAC trivia question. Travis Etienne is the subject. He's won two straight ACC Player of the Year awards. Who are the only players to win three consecutive Conference Player of the Year awards in BCS or Power Five conferences? Three consecutive Conference Players of the Year. We'll let you turn that one over. I got one head. in my head. Jameer Gibbs for about six yards on first down. I'm a slow thinker. Give me, give me a couple minutes to think about this one. Got a flag down on the play as well. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number 10 defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So Bill Inspector picks up the personal foul. And coming up, the State Farm Halftime Report. A couple of minutes away, Kevin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, Booger McFarland are standing by. They'll have highlights and analysis from around the world of college football. They'll be looking ahead, I'm sure, tonight to number two against number three. Out to about the 48-yard line. Two-yard game for Jameer Gibbs, and there is the personal foul on Spectre. It's the right call. It's late. Jeff Sims with a handoff again to Gibbs, and Gibbs breaking tackles. How about that run by the true freshman? 15 more. I love this out of Gibbs. Out of the offensive line, just give him a crease. Great set with your feet. Cut. Continue to move. Continue to move. And then watch the finish by a couple of these offensive line. Like I like that. I like that from Georgia Tech's offense. Out of the pocket. Sims on the run. Picks up two. We're not going to let you stew in your uncertainty any longer. We're going to answer the Affleck trivia question. I'm going to guess Tebow for one of them. He'd certainly be a good candidate. There are two answers to this question. Travis Etienne has won two ACC Player of the Year awards. The only players to win three in either a BCS or Power Five conference. Two pretty good players. Herschel and Donovan McNabb. He's hard to bring down as Jameer Gibbs reverses field. Did any player ever work harder to pick up two yards? If you're on a list with Herschel Walker, know. you are doing Georgia something right. Third person to have CTN. This will be a 30 second timeout. If he is able to win an ACC Player of the Year award this season. An early fumble erased by what has been a pretty good pass with a touchdown on the ground and also some chunk yards through the air. We talked about him as a pass catcher. He's been so good. Out to the flat real quick and then a swing screen. Three, four yards and then the, the vision, the finish. Bounce to the outside on the touchdown. Too much speed to the pylon. He's really complete. We talked about him coming back this year to become more complete. We knew he was great. Yards after the catch. Physical runner. Really good vision. Understanding, but could you become a better pass blocker? Check. And could you become a better pass receiver? Check. Outstanding player for Clemson. Sims hit as he throws. Tipped ball. Incomplete. That'll bring up 
it's fourth down as the freshman Brian Brzee, the consensus number one recruit in America, is tough to block. Brzee, he's getting to that point right now through five games. One on one, you can't really deal with them unless your offensive line is elite. Like you, you really feel good about your interior three. He's big bodied, he's explosive, he's violent, he's a wrecking ball. I think they call him the wrecking ball or werewolf, which tells you everything you need to know of how big time of a player he is. Timeout called by Georgia Tech with the play clock winding down before fourth down. Timeout, Georgia Tech, their second of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. You know, for Georgia Tech right now, one, I would go for this. I like this out of Jeff Collins. Uh, I think that you've got to understand that Clemson's going to throw a lot of stuff at you defensively. Now, as a play caller in that situation, especially with young players, your number one job is to make things very clear for them, very black and white. Okay, listen, if they give you one safety in the middle of the field, I want you to work X receiver, the single receiver, down to a shallow cross, down to your back. Don't force him to think too much. If they play two high safeties, work the inside receiver to the outside receiver. Just make it very defined for him. Because the challenge is, if you give him too much wiggle room and you ask him to see too much, he's going to see nothing. And so on fourth and six, give him very clear options of where to go with the football to allow him to play fast. Jameer Gibbs. Nowhere near the first down. Made the catch and immediately waffled by Trenton Simpson. Third and ten. Look at the pressure. Look at the move around. The move around. Spectre shoots the gap. You get a defensive end on a tailback, and then it's everybody. Hunt to the quarterback. Again, Nolan doing his job. Being exactly where he's supposed to be. Easy interception throw to him. And then the finish by Simpson. Seeing that back leak out of the backfield gives. Once that ball's thrown, drive and make the tackle. I've said it many a times today. There's a lot of moving parts to this defense, but it's all about everyone doing their job that makes it work. And Jay Dixon reversing fields. Just about ran up the backside of Trevor Lawrence. And this worked out okay for the Tigers as he's across midfield with a first down run. To see because these are reps at the important two minute reps for your offense. You know, like you may not get a ton of reps Timeout. running your two Clemson. minute offense. They're second of a half in a game. This is a 30 you know, second I understand timeout. what the score is, but these are also important reps for your offense to get because you never know when you're going to need them later on the season in a game environment. 344 yards passing and four touchdowns. Kind of pedestrian by Travis Etienne standards in the first half. But for Trevor Lawrence, he has already put up in this half a career high for any half he has had at Clemson. 344 yards in a half and 45 on the scoreboard. That's a good game, right? 344, yeah, I threw for 344 today. If I'm the quarterback, I'm like, man, I played well. He's done it in less than 30 minutes. Play action. Lawrence out of the pocket. Just barely gets to the line of scrimmage. And he finds Davis Allen again. This is great pocket awareness. Wait, wait, get to four in the progression. Not there, okay, leave. Eyes downfield. See Davis Allen there, great awareness of him on the sideline. But Trevor Lawrence said, I wanted to trust my pocket more. That's a perfect example of it. Don't leave it. Just get through your progression. Believe that those guys are blocking. And then listen, at some point, when you're told nothing's there, then go make the play. Really well done. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one in the slot. Lawrence. Back left corner of the end zone for Amari Rogers, and they do it again. Another Clemson touchdown. Half a hundred in the first half. Hey, you can't do it better than this now. Look at this throw. This isn't awful coverage. High and outside. 
That is high and outside. That ball needs to be in a four inch by four inch box for it to be complete. And that is absolutely perfection by Trevor Lawrence and Amari Rogers. I said it before the snap, it was one on one in the slot. They throw it right there, but it had to be a perfect throw. And again, it was. 52 to seven. And it's not halftime yet. <laughs> only five foot ten that has to add a different layer of difficulty to this throw yeah and it's a great job of Lawrence just peeking to his left real quick there and then realizing okay I got to drive this football too much air he's gonna run out right he's gonna run it look at the far peak confirm the corner bit on that little hitch and then you have to drive that ball because too much air is gonna pull him out of bounds watch the peak peak left bang right there that's the full picture there, folks. Like, that's, the, that's a full understanding. When I get to the line of scrimmage, I know what the defense is in. I know what I need to see from the defense. And I can, I, I can predetermine. I want to throw this ball to Omar Rodgers, right? Like, that's what that is. I'm going to predetermine. That ball's going to three unless somebody tells me not to. And that's why I love the... the he's just really, really good. <laughs> Wish I could say something else, you know, and, and look at the devil still coaching him, still coaching him. Which and, you can, and you can tell he's still taking the coaching. Yeah, sure. They don't care about the results. They don't care about the results. They are so in the moment of the process. I think that's why, you know, Bob, like, that's where they are. And, you know, I said this to you guys this week. This is a new team, but it's the same program. Yeah, this is a different team than last year, but it's the same program. Dabble kind of said to us this week, loving the opportunity to win more than willing, winning itself, which was fascinating to me that just the opportunity to go win the football game, he loves more than the actual win. Well, it, it really came through a couple of years ago when all four of those big defensive linemen, the Christian Wilkins and Austin Bryants, you know, that group came back. Mm -hmm. They could have gone to the NFL earlier, and they wanted to come back, and they wanted to continue this culture that has been built by Dabo Sweeney, and it's it's something that you hear players talk about over and over again, and we've now heard Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne talk about it as well. It's a really cool place for these kids to play. You know, Dabo said, we're going to work really hard, but we're going to have a lot of fun. And when you hear their players talk and you hear him talk, like, you tr that, that's not coach speak. You know, they, they truly believe it. Looks as if Georgia Tech spent the time out. Not sure why. I came off an offensive player and stopped the clock with less than one minute to play in the half. By rule, this includes a 10-second runoff. The half is over. So rather than using a timeout, just take it to halftime. 52 to 7. Clemson on top of Georgia Tech. Coming up after the break and a word from our ABC stations. Kevin, Mark, and Booger, they'll have the State Farm halftime report. To the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation 5 and the ACC on ESPN. A virtuoso performance by Trevor Lawrence and the Clemson offense in the first half. 52 to 7 at halftime. And it will be Clemson football to start the third quarter. Bob Schusen, Dan Orlovsky, Marty Smith, and Jay Dixon back deep to receive the third quarter kick. Clemson has looked unstoppable to this point. Five first half touchdown passes for Trevor Lawrence. from the one for Dixon. And he'll be brought down inside the 10-yard line. Well, that's about the only thing that has not gone well outside of a couple of moments in the first half. A couple of giveaways for Clemson, but they were immediately able to answer, and Trevor Lawrence in this offense just looks unstoppable. Yeah, they were dominant. You know, you talked about the two mistakes, but when they wanted to run the football, Travis Etienne was able to, and then through the air, I mean, Trevor Lawrence did whatever he wanted with the football, and so as an offense, you're going, man, we were outstanding, and then defensively, you gave up one play, right? They, they, they gave up one play, and so the challenge for them, all, you know, just mentality-wise is 
how much can they lock in and continue to be in a dominant mindset? For Jordan Tech, it's, hey, this is a new half. Let's go play as hard as we possibly can for our young football team. A little dump off to Latson to start off the second half for Trevor Lawrence. And he continues to add to what is going to be very quickly an over 400-yard performance. He's got Lynn J. Dixon in the backfield. Dixon picks up about a half yard. It'll be third down and a long four close to five. Guys, I talked to Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins as he exited the locker room, and I said, in this situation, what do you say to your young men? What's the message? He said, Marty, I took him in the team room, sat him down, and I simply said, I love you. I love you on Friday night when you beat Louisville, and I love you today when you're down big to the number one team in the country. Just keep fighting. Fight for what we're building because we're building something special here in Atlanta. That's the message, guys. I love you. That's a big deal to players. We, everyone's aware of what the situation is. And when you get your coach to come in and say, and instead of screaming and yelling and minimizing you and belittling you and tell you how, how much you stink, for him to go, hey, we move forward, right? You're like, you like, your actions have to match your words. And if you're gonna be a coach that tells you, don't focus on the results, but we gotta be in the process, your actions better follow. And Jeff Collins did that. Trevor Lawrence just out of the reach of Amari Rogers. Or it would have been another home run shot for Clemson. Good job by using motion. You see Lawrence catch that snap. The motion creates leverage, and he takes his shot down the field to Amari Rogers. And just outside that left stretched out hand. Clemson coming out and being aggressive, right? Third down conversion. They want to take a shot against some play action coverage or quarters coverage with play action down the field to Amari Rogers. Throw incomplete on second down and ten. Intended for Latson. Now it's third down and ten. Good job by Walton. Just competing. Just competing against Latson there on that little kind of in between go route, fade route. Just compete. I think that's going to be Jeff Collins' thing. Like when he clicks on that tape tomorrow morning, he's going to want to see every snap and go, Are, Did you guys compete? I don't care if you got whooped or whatnot. Did you compete? Third and ten. This has been a such big, a, a big Amari Rodgers down. I want to see Trevor Lawrence trust the pocket here, hang in there and get through a progression. Another deep ball. And this one out of the reach of E.J. Williams, the freshman. So a drive that will end in a punt for Will Spires. ends a streak of five consecutive possessions for Clemson that resulted in a touchdown. But, but it's a good start for Georgia Tech, right? Like, it's a good start to come out of the half. First of all, you give up a third down conversion on third and two on the slant route, but you recalibrate your reset and go, okay, defense, we're just going to continue to punch and plug away. Good start defensively for Georgia Tech. Good punt from Spires all the way down inside the 25-yard line and an immediate stop on special teams for Clemson. Dante Smith had nowhere to go. Booth with the stop. College football is watched. Not those party packs where you fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Student section lives. Learn more at livemystudentsection.com. And we will all keep our fingers crossed that next season student sections will look the way student sections are supposed to look. Because right now these guys at Georgia Tech, they're having about as much fun as you can have when your team's down 52-7. to seven. And Jameer Gibbs breaks tackles and gets free. Picks up a first down and more out to the 40-yard line. But Jeff Collins is trying to build a new culture.
pressure at Georgia Tech, pack that student section, and make his program realize there was a time they won the national championship. They were one of the elite programs in college football. He believes they can be that again. I think they will as well. I'm unapologetic. I, I think I believe in Jeff Collins. I believe in the vision, uh, the leadership, uh, what he sees for this program. You know, I think everyone always goes, well, why? Well, why do you think that he'll get him back there? Tell me why you don't think that. You know, like, he's done it everywhere he's been. I asked him the other day, okay, coach, like, in your eyes. He said, downtown Atlanta. He said, it's the hottest city in America. I don't know if he means that literally, because it's really hot in Atlanta, or <laughs> just with action. Top four academic institution. You know, the, 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 the culture of the city of Atlanta, the recruiting in the state of Georgia right now is just bonkers. And so... Um, I believe in everything that he says and, and kind of envisions for this program, and it's going to happen. I truly believe it's going to happen. Dante Smith, a first down and more as he's breaking some tackles. And Marty, he's running hard for Jeff Collins. By all means, all right, I want you guys to bear with me on this because I have an opinion about what Collins is building here, too. The energy that you feel around the program and the pair shift that's come from that passion and that energy reminds me a whole lot of Clemson, South Carolina back around 09 and 2010. You agree? Totally. Like, listen, at some point, you you won't start believing in the vision until someone paints it for you, right? And he's got to paint the unrealistic vision or the big dreams, and then he's got to go work to go get the recruits, and then the three-star recruits they need to develop into four-star players. And the four-star recruits that they get, they got to develop and develop them into five-star players. This Clemson did not become Clemson overnight, right? Like, Bama did not become Bama overnight. Ohio State did. Like, it takes a committed group a vision that is unrealistic to everybody else. Because I'll be honest, you talk to people, they think Jeff Collins' vision for Protect is unrealistic. I don't. I think it's spot on. As long as you commit to it and you can get the guys and you put in the, the sweat equity, equity, it'll happen. Can you get players at Georgia Tech? Absolutely. I'm telling you, the state of Georgia is loaded with high school talent. And so um, I think in a couple years, we'll be talking about Georgia Tech the way that we did, I don't know, seven years ago about Clemson. And according to at least our ESPN recruiting guys at ESPN.com, Georgia Tech did the best in terms of the 2020 top 100 players in the state of keeping 11 of them home and making them part of the recruiting class with Jeff Sims now facing fourth and eight. Here comes a blitz right up the middle. And boy, it is tough to diagnose where all the pressure is coming from, from that Clemson defensive front. And they get a takeaway on downs. Brent Venables keeps on dialing up the heat. For you. And it looks like the quarterback switch has been made by Clemson as expected. Chez Malusi. I was actually two Heisman Trophy ceremonies ago. I watched both those guys fight separately. Lopez fought to begin the night. And I just remember I'm not a you know, like, I'm, I'm getting into boxing. I don't know, a, I'm not a, a know-it-all about boxing, but I just remember watching the fight and being like, man, I don't know who this guy is, but he's remarkable. And then Loma came out, and Loma's interest was like, wait, what is this? Like, me and my wife were sitting there, and I'm like, what is going on? And it's a spectacle, and I didn't, again, I did not know a ton about it, and then I watched this fight, and Loma's just this technician and just abusing his guy. It's wild that two years ago, I saw them each independently fight, and then now they're fighting tonight for free. Like, I could go home, turn on ESPN, and I get to go watch that fight tonight. Like, that, I, I'm, I'm consumed by watching that tonight. I can't, I can't wait to see it. It is Tyson Pumachon at quarterback now for Clemson. Third down and 12. The pocket collapses, and he will go down. on the play by Jaquan Griffin. Good fight by Georgia Tech defense again. You love to see that. You know, like that's two straight series where you get off the ball, off the field, your defense is playing well. Pumachan having the opportunity to play Connecticut man. Connecticut young man from Connecticut. They produce nothing but stellar quarterbacks, just so everyone knows.
We'll put up our top five quarterbacks in Connecticut history coming up a little bit later on. Do we have five? Not sure if we've got five to count. Time now for the All-State playoff predictor. And Clemson, well, not surprisingly, in the ACC, the heavy favorite to reach the college football playoff. Now, three games from now, they play Notre Dame. Notre Dame ranked number four. North Carolina, the fifth-ranked team in the country. We'll have them on ABC tonight, taking on Florida State in Tallahassee. You're number five in the country, according to the poll. And yet, right now, you are 1% as the ball pops up in the air. Out of the hands of Jeff Sims. Is it a takeaway for Clemson? It is, as Sims coughs it up. Justin Maskell got into the backfield and helped find the loose ball as it came out of the grasp of Jeff Sims and was ruled to be a fumble. Pressure off the edge. And that's just, he just lost the grip. That's definitely a fumble. And Maskell, it just fell right into his lap. You know, I'm, I'm seeing his hand, his fingers are on those laces. Like, sometimes for quarterbacks, if your fingers aren't on the laces, hot day, sweat, like, that can easily slip out. But the fact that his fingers were on the laces and still slipped out, that ball had to be wet or just slick somehow for that to happen. Lumachan with a little shoulder fake and throws one into the dirt on first down. Do we have a top five list quarterback-wise for the state of Connecticut? Oh, man, that's uh, Steve Young is number one. I don't know if you've heard of him. No big deal. Uh, that's close, though. Number two. Young or Orlovsky, that's it's kind of a one and a one A. I don't know who would be number two. <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody else even remotely close to Steve. Here's Malusi into the end zone for the touchdown. So Chez Malusi is able to find pay dirt. And the fumble becomes six and maybe seven more for the Tigers. Good offensive line just creating some space for Malusi. A zone read, Malusi patient, and then burst through for the sophomore out of Naples, Florida. Can't turn the ball over versus anybody. No matter what level of offense string-wise you're playing against Clemson, they're more likely, more than likely going to convert. All Clemson looking very much like the number one team that they are. Tonight, it's UFC Fight Night from Fight Island. Brian Ortega takes on the Korean Zombie, an action-packed main event. Prelims at four with the main card at 7 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. In Spanish to get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNplus.com or download the ESPN app. Another touchback off the kick. That'll come out to the 25-yard line. It's time now for our Pacific Life game summary. And to summarize what we have seen so far, Trevor Lawrence is really good. And he's got the rest of the afternoon off, courtesy of 404 yards and five touchdowns. He was dominant. He had a dominant first half of football. The great thing is, I promise you, he will watch the tape and go, my number one goal was to be mentally perfect. And I think there was that one mistake, the one forced interception where he was reckless with that decision. That will make him... I don't want to say haunt him, but that will be something that he looks at and said, I cannot do that. And this will always be a learning experience as well for a young quarterback, which despite the score, Clemson on top by 52 points. That young man, Jeff Sims, has a very bright future. What can he learn the rest of this afternoon? Oh, these are invaluable reps. I mean, hey, like... Watch the other guy on, on, on the sideline and, and how he's focused on the play. That He does not care about anything but that play. He'll keep it here and lower his shoulder to the 31-yard line. Let's check in with Kevin. Bob, let's go to South Florida, take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. The Eric King, how about his fourth touchdown of the day, Bob? Really good bounce-back performance. He struggled against Clemson, but way to bounce back today. Kind of how I do, Dan Olaski. When I make double bogey, I bounce back with the birdie. He 
make enough of them. Plenty of opportunities to bounce back. It's not like there's one or two around. <laughs> You know, but just, again, just hit Jeff Sims again. Like that, that's that's hard for the. It's all growth. And de quarterbacking is a developmental position, and so the mental aspect of you got to lock in on that play. Don't care the score. Be great in situations. Lock on. Lock in on this moment where we are. Looking to run here and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And Marty Jeff Sims. The learning curve continues for a freshman quarterback. It's quite, it's quite a learning curve, Bob, certainly playing against the number one team in the country. I talked to Sims this week about what it's like to step on campus and be the starter right away and what might have come that he didn't expect. He said, man, I expected a lot of mistakes early, long, early on, and I've definitely made some, but they're fixable. That's why I'm not beating myself down about it. I'm my biggest critic, always have been. I know where to fix it because I'm not afraid to be critical of myself. That's something I've always done. Now it's just on a bigger scale. And he'll go back and look at the tape today. He'll see what he did wrong, and he'll work to correct it. We talked to Jeff Collins about Sims the other day, and he was telling us the story after the Syracuse game. You know, he did not play well in the Syracuse game. And Jeff's office sits right on top of their field, their stadium field. And he said it was 8.30 at night, and Jeff Sims walks over to the stadium, asks them to turn the lights on, and he's out there throwing. To it by himself, just working on drops and throws and whatnot. This was an unsolicited thing. This was a young man going, I didn't play the way that I want to play today. Uh, my standard is higher, and I know that I've got to work. And when I'm done working, work a little bit more. And when he told me that story, I said, man, that, that, that is so impressive that the young man decided, just because I had a game today doesn't mean I can't get better. And uh, very, very encouraging that he's got this special talent, but the, his awareness uh, and his, his want to, to get better is high. Yeah, the, the story that struck me was when he was talking about how he noticed as Bumachan goes back to work. He's going to throw it on second and seven. He's going to take a shot for a deep ball down the sideline. And that is through the hands of Joe and Joe. And it's incomplete, but that he seems to have a relationship with everyone on the team. That when he was named the starter, he was a true freshman. And at the first practice, he sees all of these upperclassmen go over. And he's got like secret handshakes with half of them and already had developed a relationship with a lot of players that he had barely been on the practice field even with. And Jeff Collins said, the last time that I saw that was Dak at Mississippi State. As Pumachan throws one to the sideline, that's incomplete on third and seven. So, you know, those intangibles, that kind of electric personality, that magnetic quality that instantaneously he is drawing older players to him as a leader. He was an assistant with Dak Prescott at Mississippi State, and that was the image he had in his mind when he saw Sims with his teammates. Yeah, and he's the first in, first out. You know, he's the first guy getting to the facility to get his work in, and he's the first guy out. And, and Jeff even said that they have a text message together. Just him and Jeff Sims. Jeff Collins, excuse me, and Jeff Sims have a one-on-one -on -one text message together where they're just building this relationship. Jeff Collins is very aware for this program to get to the, that, that kind of big dream and vision that he has is it's going to be because of number 10. Ten, number 10's got to become a, a big time player and the, the relationship is such an integral part of that. Up, he's got a lot of making up to do if you want to catch up to Trevor Lawrence but he certainly has the ability of course the guy on the left that's just one more step towards what you almost think is an eventuality yeah. of a Heisman Trophy and the number one spot in the NFL draft. Yeah, and right, and right now it's it's about what, what team is going to get that one pick for Trevor Lawrence. I'll just be honest, whoever whoever gets the first pick wins. I don't care if you go 0-16. I do not care. Jets fans, Giants fans, whoever. I know you don't like to hear that, Bob. <laughs> Well, someone was saying this to me the other day, what would you do? And I said, the comfort that I take as the Jets broadcaster, I almost look at their quarterback situation, I don't want to say a no-lose situation, Yes. but if they won a few games and didn't have the first pick, and the worst-case scenario is they've got Sam Darnold going forward, a player that I still think is a $20 stock, selling at $2. Agreed. I think Sam Darnold is absolutely capable of being a top 10 NFL quarterback, given the opportunity, given the weapons to work with, and given, you know, the, the chance to have an offensive line in front of him. It's also quality. 
Now, having said that, if the worst case scenario becomes you go 0-16 and you draft what might be the best quarterback and most highly rated quarterback since John Elway to enter the NFL draft, and it looks like Trevor Lawrence is going to be that, how is that a bad thing? No, I, I, like, listen, the 0-16 isn't great, right? No coach, player, I, I have one. No coach, player, general manager wants that on their resume. But at the end of the day, when you get the most important person in college football is the head coach. There's no deba debate about it. It's the head coach. The most important person in the NFL is the quarterback. And for an organization, Jets, Giants, Falcons, those three likely teams, the Jaguars, for your chance to get this young man to lead your franchise, again, not only on the field, but he is the billion-dollar CEO off the field as well, Take the 0-16. Like, that is a worthy trade-off for your next 15 years at quarterback. Flag down on the last play. Sets up second down and long. Quarterback draw for Sims. He's a couple of yards shy of the first half. So you're right. We talked about it earlier. What box does Trevor Lawrence not check? Yeah. From a playing ability on the field standpoint, from a leadership ability off the field standpoint, from a work ethic standpoint, a football intelligence standpoint, he's... He's everything, Marty, that I think any NFL organization would want their future CEO to be. And that's what you are when you're a starting quarterback. You, you are, you're the CEO, Marty. No question. And you're the face of the franchise. And Dabo was actually asked this week about the New York Jets. And he said, I don't have any thoughts about the New York stuff. But as far as Trevor, I don't know what you could possibly want in a quarterback that he doesn't possess. Size, got it. Running ability, got it. IQ, got it. Leader, got it. Wants to work, got it. Humble, got it. Accuracy, got it. Pocket presence, toughness, got it. Willing to give you every last ounce of everything he's got, got it. He possesses everything you could possibly ever want in a quarterback. And that's all I have to say about that. He would, I mean, he went full force Gump at the end of that quote. <laughs> uh, I, I remember we spoke with Trevor on Wednesday. And I did the, the, the mega cast for the national championship last year. And I walked away from the game going, okay, I saw one thing that he needs to get better at, anticipating with the football. So I asked him the open-ended question. What did you learn from the national title game? Well, he was prepared. He said, number one, I, was, I realized that I was getting away with things that were going to catch up to me. Number two, that my base in the pocket wasn't good enough. Number three, that I bounced when number one wasn't there to me, meaning he went up and down with his shoulders. That affected his accuracy. I mean, I wasn't ready for that answer. I, I wasn't ready for a guy to be so prepared to answer that question and a player to be that good go, I, I, knew, I knew I had to get better at these things. And I didn't until it presented itself in the game, and he said he attacked that stuff this offseason. Flag on the Pumachon carry, as there was a little extra something as he went out of bounds. As the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 13 defense, 15 yard penalty, and an automatic first down. That's the safety, Avery Showell who I think took exception to the stiff gotcha. arm to the face mask and then a frustration throw down out of bounds. I, guess. I don't think that's agreed just enough for a flag, personally, in football. But. Pumachan's little brother's going to UConn, I believe. He's, he's got a young, young brother in Connecticut that's committed to UConn. Obviously under-recruited. What did you just say? Sorry. Did that go out over the air? I thought I was hitting talk back. Well, Tyson Pumachan, a redshirt freshman from Bridgeport, and not far behind Pumachan on the depth chart, is one of the top quarterback prospects in all of college football. Is I can't pull that one in. A freshman from California, DJ Uyunglele, who we may see later on this afternoon. And there were multiple publications that rated Uyunglele as the number one player in the nation, if not the number two player to Brian Brzee. And 
he might be the heir apparent to Trevor Lawrence. Who knows? He, he might be the guy yeah. that when Trevor Lawrence moves on next season, gets an opportunity. I got a buddy, Will Blackman, who played in the NFL for a long time, BC guy, who was actually just texting me not long ago saying, oh, you get to watch DJ play, you get to watch DJ play, because he lives out in California, and he's right. <laughs> seen him play a bunch of high school football. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm so excited to watch him play. I've heard, heard so much stuff about him, and then we have the opportunity to say Pumachan play. But I want to see DJ play, first of all. He's like 6'4", 250 pounds. He's enormous. Um, but everyone to that, that talks about him raves about the quarterback that he is, the talent um, behind his arm. And so I I'd love to see him get some snaps. Right at the first down line the game on the dive forward. Lucy, let's see if... Clemson gets a fresh set of downs. The nose of the football just about to the line to gain. And it looks like they'll say first down without measurement. So this drive will continue for Clemson and what will continue later on tonight. The news of the day, Georgia plays Alabama and Alabama will have their head coach on the sideline because it's been three consecutive within 24 hour period negative coronavirus tests for Nick Saban and the SEC rules state that that kind of turns it to a false positive that he received earlier this week as Pumachad with a little fish it's caught by Dixon so three straight negative tests Thursday through today and that reinstates you for SEC guidelines which means they will determine the positive that Nick Saban received earlier this week as a false positive since three negative tests have been conducted each 24 hours apart. So Nick Saban coaches Alabama tonight. And just imagine the mental, like, energy that might give your football team. Hey, the greatest coach of all time is probably not going to be there for the biggest game of the year so far. Nope, check that. He is going to be on the sideline. Like, I'd imagine that gives you a bunch of juice, and that'll be a great game. I mean, you think strength on strength, right? Like, Mac Jones playing quarterback for Bama, and Devontae Smith, and Jalen Waddle versus Georgia's defensive secondary. that got a bunch of veterans. Like, that is going to be an awesome matchup to watch. Demetrius Knight slow to get up, and so we've got an injury timeout, a chance to check in with Kevin Nagandi. Bob, things are falling apart in Tennessee. Terry Wilson to Allen Daly, Kentucky. How about 17 straight losses in Knoxville? Well on its way to snapping that slide up 34 to 7 this game on the SEC Network. Uh, also got an update here. South Carolina up 26-19 in the second half. We had a little squabble on the sidelines. Bo Nix with Seth Williams. The offense not generating points on the road. Which would be a worse loss there? I guess you'd have to say Kentucky going to Knoxville and beating Tennessee on the road rather than Auburn losing on the road to South Carolina. But for a couple of teams still in the top 20, not good losses today if those scores hold for Auburn and for Tennessee. Yeah, I'd agree. That Kentucky one would be a little bit more jarring. Case up the middle dances close to a first down. That should take us to the end of the third quarter. Trevor Lawrence, an opportunity with five touchdown passes in his pocket to watch the rest of this one. We'll come back after these messages from our ABC stations. Tiger King over the last five years. trips to the playoff, four national championship game appearances, a couple of college football playoff championship trophies, and that earns you an extraordinarily uncomfortable cartoon tribute here on our ESPN college football coverage. I cannot wait till our next production <laughs> meeting with Dabo to talk about that mustache. <laughs> like, I cannot wait because that will be the first thing that he brings up is, why'd y'all put that mustache on me? I got a mustache. Tyson Pumachan, it looks like, has gone back to the locker room. So Hunter Helms, another true freshman, and a walk-on getting an opportunity at quarterback now for Clemson here in the fourth quarter. And a broken play here, so Helms takes off. 
And look, the reason that you get the uncomfortable cartoon graphic is because you can be compared with a much more regular graphic with this guy. Dabo Sweeney and Nick Saban. These are the two kings of college football since the start of the 2015 season. Dabo's built an absolute dynasty. And I don't see it slowing down. I really don't. I think that you're going to see over these next five years, the conversation is going to become, is Dabo Swinney the greatest quarter or college coach ever? I, I, I think that's going to become a conversation. They're going to be in the national championship hunt every year for the next four or five years. And if it continues the trend that it has over the last four or five years, they're going to win a couple and win a ton of games. Tipped the ball as Helms almost throws an interception. Well, if they make it to the college football playoff this year, then Dabo Sweeney would take his football team to the sixth consecutive version of college football's Final Four. Right. Now, the Final Four, that's a college basketball thing. Sure. But in college basketball or college football, the only other coach to take a team to the Final Four six times in a row is John Wood. That's it. So that would be Dabo Sweeney. And John Wooden, the only two to that accomplish have done that. that. Gotten their, their team to a Final Four grouping of some sort. Six times in a row. Right. Elms with a touch throw down the sideline. And he drops it into Kobe Pace for a first down. Really nice job by Elms. Sees man coverage. Pace gets that peel by the linebacker. Wait, wait, got to get up over him. Really nice job by Pace. And taking a hit at the end. Good for the young man, Helms, to make that throw on fourth down. He threw 48 touchdown passes his senior year at West Columbia in South Carolina. And he walks on at Clemson and now gets a chance in the fourth quarter to play against Georgia Tech. Ace for about three and a half yards. Cool is that though? I mean, he probably doesn't think he's ever going to actually get into a game, right? You know, like walk on. I got three highly, highly recruited players ahead of me: Trevor Lawrence and DJ, and then Pumacha. And like all of a sudden, like, hey, you get to go in the game. You know, I think that's really cool that he gets the the payoff almost in a way. That I guess I don't know if you're. Now, granted, he's a walk on. Sure, he has gone obviously to kind of club up and go to Clemson. Yeah, yeah. I'm rather sure than maybe opportunities. And sure. He said, I want to go and be on the best team. But don't you think there's always the belief inside that player that if yes. I get there and I get in front of the coaches and I show them what I can do, as again he's going to try a touch throw towards the front left corner of the end zone, and that might be good, and it is to a Joe a Joe for a touchdown. Make throws like that, you might end up moving up the depth chart before too long. How about that? Good for Helms, man. Look at the joy. Look at the celebration. Watch a Joe track the football. Come down on that pylon. That's a different rule in college football than the NFL. And we'll have to see if the ball breaks the plane. The moment his heel contacts really the pylon, he's out of bounds. Right. Touchdown. That play is under further review. In the NFL, that pylon, that's just a marker. In college football, you are out of bounds the moment you touch the pylon. So you'd have to see that as he's backing up to the goal line. Where's the ball, right? That the ball breaks the plane before his heel touches the pylon. It looks like it does, yeah. but that is something that replay will have to take a look at. I think it helps, too, that that ball's in the right shoulder almost. Like, that ball's going to be drifted towards his right shoulder-ish. And he pulls it down on his right side, which looks to be crossing the plane and in the end zone. And this is probably the best look that you would get. We don't have a camera. It looks like right down the goal line, but heel on the pylon, his whole body, the rest of his body seems to be over the goal line. They rule it a touchdown on the field. And hard to imagine that the replay booth would change that. But two really nice touch throws by Hunter Helps. Beautiful. I mean, that, that was a great throw by Helms because he, uh, enough air to, again, allow the receiver to make that adjustment. You get thrown into the game, and it's like, hey, young man, go make a fourth down throw. Great, beautiful throw. And like, hey, we're going to give you the opportunity to, th to throw a touchdown here. So take advantage of it. I hope it stays a completion for the young man.
old saying, in, you know, if you're a lawyer in court, the longer the jury stays out, the more worried you get about yeah. the verdict. If it was a touchdown, they'd probably have told us by now that it was going to stay. But right now, okay, where? Exactly. Where's the clock? Make sure the ball gets snapped at the original line of scrimmage again. Yeah, if they're going to say that... After further review, the pass is incomplete. It'll be third down and seven at the 18-yard line. The clock is correct, and we'll start on the snap. And that's that pylon rule in college football. Once you contact the pylon, you're out of bounds. And so it would have been his first career touchdown pass. Instead, it's off the board, and it's third and seven. Yeah, but you know what? I'm sure on the sideline, they're talking about what the play call would be if it was ruled incomplete, obviously. So, hey, Hunter, it's stuff that you like. Right, let's get a concept that you like, stuff that you feel good about seeing so he can have an idea of what they're going to call and think about it to operate as good as he can. And instead, it's a sprint draw to Kobe Pace. Pace running players over and picking up a first down. Just a beautiful handoff. Sprint draw, you get the defense to flow one side to the other. You see the set by the offensive lineman. Try to take advantage of an over-aggressive third down defense and then pace just a good finish on that run. Shovel pass. And there is the first touchdown pass for Hunter Helms as Kobe Pace is on the receiving end. Sometimes shovel pass is challenging for a quarterback. But watch him go to his left, read that defensive end. Once that defensive end comes up field, you just kick that underneath like a little option pitch. It's easier for a righty quarterback going to their left because they're so often used to pitching with their right hand instead of left. Good operation. Sixty-six on the board for Clemson with eleven and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Football on ABC is presented by PlayStation 5. Play has no limits. And in part by Pacific Life, more than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. Twelve years ago today, Davo Sweeney debuted as the head coach for the Clemson Tigers against Georgia Tech. And that was a very unique moment for him. He got to rub Howard's Rock for the first time, run down the hill, that great tradition for the first time. And a lot of people wondered about that hire from then Athletics Director Terry Don Phillips, but he said he saw something in Sweeney, the wide receivers coach, that he felt like he had the right energy and the right passion and the right direction to lead that program. Well, Dabo didn't really know what to make of it, so he stayed in his wide receiver coach position on Tuesday and Wednesday after he was named the interim head coach. Well, finally, on Thursday evening, he decides, I'm not getting anything done. Too many people want my time. I'm going to move my personal items down to the office that was previously held by former head coach Tommy Bowden. Well... The next morning, on Friday morning, he's driving to work in the dark. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. He hasn't slept one minute all week. And he's a man of faith, so he asked the Lord, Lord, I need a sign. I need you to give me something that shows me that I'm the right guy for this job and I need to be confident in this job. And as he turned into the head coach's parking spot, just outside the head coach's office for the first time in Death Valley, the curb was a reflector curb, and it lit up. It lit up at the, uh, curb number 88. Well, guys, guess what Dabo Sweeney's number was at the University of Alabama as a player? 88. He said he never had another question that he would succeed in this job, and boy, has he succeeded winning his team in the country from 2011 to now. Yeah, his stories were incredible. Just th that 40 minutes that he just went. I think the biggest thing for me, Marty, was just feeling uh, the, the, the kind of the emotional journey that he took us on. You know, the the oh, it almost felt like it happened yesterday. He, he was saying Tuesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. Like, this is... 
15, almost 15 years ago, 12 years ago of these stories, and he's kind of like they just happened recently type of mind frame, and just you feel how appreciative of the journey that he is, how much he believes in what he's experienced. And he said, like, that's why our, our team and our program is the way they are, because the experience that I had initially at Clemson. I love the story. Every single member of the program knows that energy. Mm -hmm. The fact that Dabo Sweeney demands of his assistant coaches that they have the pictures of their families over top of the doors of their offices so they remember who they're doing it for, that type of energy. When, Time out. Clemson. When Sweeney told us first and a half. this story, uh, it really moved all of us. Uh, we'll be right back. This is College Football on ABC. Life game summary. And to summarize... Most of this game, Trevor Lawrence is really good. Sees vision on the safety, jump down on the tight end. I know I've got space to go through Amari Rodgers on this post. Got to put air on it. Beautiful touchdown throw. Little play fake toss. See that linebacker flow? Even if you're not in perfect coverage, this is an absolute dime to Davis Allen. Then the athleticism. Going to my left, righty quarterback, flip my hips, square my shoulders, and throw an absolute rope to Frank Ladson. We've talked. All day about how good he is but it's awesome when you watch it on the field and you go man as much as you say about the young man as a player he might be better and I just he's, he's a special talent well in eighth grade he went to spring football practice for his varsity high school football team and beat out the incumbent senior starter as an eighth grader. So he goes into fall as a ninth grader and becomes a four-year high school starter. Then he goes to Clemson and four games into his freshman season, of course, takes over. And what at the time seemed on the surface like kind of a controversial quarterback sure. change. And no one thinks it's controversial anymore as all they do is win, and he has become a national championship level quarterback, and he's just at every level seemingly has proved to have been born to be a starting quarterback for a winning football team. I mean, it's just gotten better and better as the years have gone on for Trevor Lawrence. I think the thing that I love about his game the most, again, there's thousands of them. He protects the football. Like, he values the football for as much as they've thrown the ball 13 career interceptions is darn good. When you have that ability and then you value the football, that's what makes you go, man, this is a can't-miss player. This guy is a can't-miss guy at the quarterback spot. Well, making people miss is Michael Dukes. And we can remind people, he just turned 21, correct? He just turned 21. Not long ago. And so he's going to go into the NFL as a 21-year-old. Joe Burrow, last year's number one pick, was 24. And Joe Burrow had the greatest college season I've ever seen a quarterback have. And I love Joe Burrow. He's going to be a superstar in the NFL. He's three years younger. Trevor Lawrence is three years younger. Like, you, he'll be into his second contract or in conversations with a second contract at the same point that when Joe Burrow was drafted last year. Well, it's got to be fun when your son is able to catch a pass. Will Sweeney makes the reception for his dad's team as we check in with Kevin. Bob, South Carolina's never beaten Auburn since they joined the SEC in 1992. Eight straight losses to the Tigers. Colin Hill to Shai Smith. Beautiful grab. 32 yards. That would set up a field goal. 30 to 19 right now. South Carolina and Kentucky, they get their first win in Knoxville since the Reagan administration, 1984. 34 to 7. Wow, and convincingly so. As Hunter Helms on a rollout to the sideline. Will Brown makes the catch. Down to about the 35 yard line. Marty? Guys, as we've stated throughout the broadcast, Lawrence is certainly the number one pick in next year's NFL draft. And you wonder how someone with that much acclaim, deserved acclaim, and that much of a sterling future is able to stay in the moment. And he was asked that this week, and I loved what he had to say. Just understanding that more than likely this will be my last season. I really just appreciate where I'm at. It's kind of bittersweet because I realize how fortunate I am to be at a place like Clemson, surrounded by really good people. That makes
makes it a lot easier to be great where my feet are. Touchdown, Tigers. Good play by play, Marty. I mean, just, do you see any tickets to break? In the last segment as well, showing I'm out. maximum We're out. versatility. We probably should. We should just do a headphone drop right now because there's nothing he can't do. Should Marty take the replay? Quick wide receiver screen to a Joe. I mean, this is a big, this is a big young man now. 6'3", 210 pounds, violent. Finish. Long strider. Get in the end zone. Shockingly, Clemson has another young promising wide yep. receiver and, and to marty's point the trevor lawrence really is looking wide angle lens at his whole life yeah and the fact that i understand i'm in a special place it speaks to the Dabo sweeney clemson culture we talked about earlier today it's, a, it's the best place in america to play right now if you're a young man who wants to go win a ton and have a fun ton of fun 16 leads that front our audience coming up later on ABC less than 30 minutes UCF star Dylan Gabriel nine touchdowns on the season coming off a, a tough loss against Tulsa they get ready for Memphis these teams combined for 74 points per game plenty of offense coming your way what's that thing on Twitter right now how it started how it's, how it's going, going. <laughs> I think we just <laughs> saw it <laughs> comes off and you have to stop playing football if your helmet comes off I believe that is going to be a penalty I think against Georgia Tech and players have to be separated with seven and a half minutes to go in what has been a Clemson trouncing of the Yellow Jackets personal foul Continuing to participate after his helmet came off. Number 34 receiving team. 15-yard penalty. First down. And that's the tight end, Jack Coco. Your helmet comes off. You have to stop playing. And later today, the 11th-ranked Texas A&M Aggies in Starkville to take on Mike Leach and Mississippi State for Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So it's Jimbo against the Air Raid. Trying to build off of what was a program-defining win or could be for Jimbo Fisher against Florida last week. Huge win for that program because that was the expectation when Jimbo went there was like, hey, we're gonna, this is gonna become who we are. We're gonna be the program that that gets those big wins. And so sometimes you only need one. Like I said before, you need one. And that was really big for Jimbo and Kellen Mond last week. It feels like Kellen Mond has been at Texas A&M for like seven, seven years, years at yeah. this point. Started as a freshman, and now we've got an injured yellow jacket. It looks like Jordan Williams, the freshman right tackle who was down with Jordan Yates, who came on last possession for Georgia Tech for Jeff Sims, at quarterback. But Kellen Mond, he's starting to put up some big numbers this season. And if he can have his best ever season, and you would think he would, having been at AM now with some experience under Jimbo Fisher, probably has a very firm grasp of what can be a really difficult offense. Because I've been told by some, sure. yes, yeah. by some defensive play callers, um, his defense coordinator put it perfectly when we talked about Jimbo Fisher. Three kinds of coordinators. Mm -hmm. There's the kind of coordinator that's a bad coordinator that looks at the film on Sunday and says, ah, I see what they were doing. I should have been, I'm going to make adjustments for next week. Then your average coordinator maybe looks at some adjustments at halftime yes. and says, oh, all right, now we got it. It took us a half to figure it out. In the second half, we'll make some adjustments. Then there's Jimbo Fisher, who will make adjustments on possession two. Oh, sure. Of, of what he saw you do on possession and he's one. And also, he's also leaving crumbs. You know, he, he's, he's giving you stuff to bite because he knows how you'll respond and setting himself up for other plays coming in that game. It's also a very, it's, a, it's an offense that is always giving the quarterback answers. To, to understand it on, on the board or paper is relatively simple. To go know what answer is necessary when the question's presented in three seconds, that's the challenge, you know? And so uh, that's what Jimbo has done so well for Kellen Mond. I see a young Jordan Yates. His uncle, TJ, I played with in the NFL. TJ Yates, now a coach at the Houston Texans. Great football mind. 
He speaks well of Jordan, bright future as well. Good friend. And Yates caught around the ankles at the line of scrimmage by another freshman, Trey Williams, on the quarterback draw, and it will be fourth down. Watch eight. The hand fight, the club, the awareness. Quarterback runs coming. And to go make that tackle. You don't want to just dip your head. I mean, you got to play with your eyes up. Great job by Williams. Again, another Connecticut kid. Why is Clemson coming to Connecticut and getting all the good players, man? That's amazing, because they always have stayed home and gone to UConn. Oh, wait. I'm from New Jersey. Rutgers has the same problem. Wait, there's a ton, a ton of talent <laughs> a ton in New of Jersey. Talent. We only get a handful in Connecticut. That punt rolls down to the 31-yard line. Watching ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation 5 as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. And when you put up numbers like this, well, you are driving towards a championship. Clemson, since 1915, they have not put up this many points on the road. 73 on the board today in Atlanta. And another sideline slip for Ches Belusi as we check in with Kevin Nagandi. Bob, you mentioned points. Expect a lot coming your way in our next game on ABC. UCF and Memphis. Marlon Williams, 32 catches in his first three games. Staying in the American. More scoring here in Philly. This is Anthony Russo to Randall Jones. Temple up 39-31. Yeah, great job by Temple using the width of the field. And now that that football powerhouse UConn is out of the way, the American is wide. Oh, boy. Well, there's so many things to unpack there. Booger taking a shot at you. Somehow Kevin Nagandi weasels a temple Shocking. highlight into the cut-in. You know he's producing from the chair, right? There's yeah. no way that highlight makes it if he's not anchored. Hey, can we can we get Bob and Dan to cut in and we'll do that temple highlight? You know, I'm sure there's a bunch of people at home dying to see that score. We know the Eagles aren't going to bring any joy this weekend, so let's throw a little tempo in there. And, Booger, you are the last person to talk about good football teams right now. 2019's over, Bub. 2020. And, and I feel like if I took me and my 8-year-old flag football team that lost in the last play this morning down to LSU, we would score 50 on that defense. And you know you're getting pretty soundly when the team in the lead puts the punter in to play quarterback. Because Will Spires has taken over for Trevor Lawrence you know, and Bob, Tyson Pumachon and Hunter. I just Hunter. want to tell you that hey, Temple's Kevin. produced uh, a lot of quality coaches that we've seen uh, in the American as well as uh, in the ACC <laughs> and in the Big 12 and now in the NFL. Bruce Arians, Matt Rule, I can keep on going if you want me to. Yeah, it, it, it is definitely the kind of job that people run away from as quickly as possible <laughs> to a promotion. I think you're right. I, th I think you encapsulated it perfectly. So well, by the way, I appreciate the compliments on the producer. Well, really well done here. Yeah, you, you're doing a heck of a job. The only thing this show is missing from Dan's standpoint is some type of a highlight of Booger missing a three-footer. Well, we're going to have plenty of opportunities to have that sometime. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Booger's notorious. You're still away. <laughs> By the way, Will Spires just completed a pass. And now Ches Malusi with 3.44 to go fix up a couple of more yards. You know, for a Clemson team that still has Notre Dame, number four in the country, working out there three games from now. And on top of that, they get to a championship game. You think there's probably a pretty good chance they will in the ACC. Maybe they meet North Carolina. Yeah. So I guess big picture. You know, all the folks in, say, SEC land or Big Ten land, they have liked to look at the ACC and said, this conference is nothing but Clemson, and they just destroy all the competition. Mm -hmm. The rest of the conference is nothing but a bunch of pretenders. And yet this season, those in the AP poll are saying not so fast as they borrow a line from Lee Corso because they're going to take Miami and put them in the top ten. Notre Dame in the top five. North Carolina is in the top five. Is this a different year in the ACC? Will one of these teams finally rise up and really give Clemson a run for their money, or are we just looking at the same old Tigers beating everybody by five touchdowns? Yeah, I, I, listen, it's college football. You never know. You, you got 18 to 22-year-olds that got to show up every week, and we know the state of our, our world right now. 
if you're going to have the chance to get to Clemson this year, your secondary has to win the game. Like, you have to dare Clemson with Frank Ladson and Joseph and Gata, these young receivers. You got to go, you guys are going to beat us. I'm not going to let Trevor Lawrence beat us. I'm not going to let Travis Etienne beat us. You got to challenge those guys on a consistent basis to go downfield and make contested catches. So if, it, if, you're, if you're asking me what team on their schedule do I think secondary-wise can do that, I'm a big believer in Jeff Halfley at Boston College. Really good defensive mind. Can he get that secondary to play out of their face? I don't think so. Because, again, then you got to do enough to score offensively. Because Clemson's defense just is bonkers. Notre Dame, Kyle Hamilton, a big-time safety. Like, could they play secondary football enough and score enough points? I don't see anybody in the ACC that, that can do that to Clemson. This will be a 30-second timeout. Well, you mentioned, obviously we've been talking about Trevor Lawrence all day, but the Clemson defense jumped out almost as much to you on tape as their offense did. Yeah, just the right, violence so of their, their defensive line that. and the ability to get off of blocks and then how everybody just runs to the football. You hear coaches say all the time, we got to get our hats to the football. And it shows for Clemson. And it was on their tape. And then they've got these unique blitz packages where, okay, where are guys going to come from? Everybody comes unblocked. And it's just this explosive defense that, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and it comes at you so quickly. But then everybody goes to the ball. I remember watching tape this week against Miami, and there was a clip where all 11 guys for Clemson's defense on a handoff met the tailback basically at the line of scrimmage. Like, you know, I was just, I was just, I, I marveled at, like, th this defense is, is dominant as well, as much as 16. Well, let's set the menu for you. Some upcoming games later on this afternoon. Just heard Kevin Agani and Booker talk about UCF and Memphis. That follows us here on ABC. And then the triple header continues later on tonight. North Carolina in Tallahassee coming off of what was a real impressive win last week. We called it against Virginia Tech. They averaged close to 11 yards per play. And, of course, the big one at 8 Eastern. Georgia, Alabama, now finding out this morning that Nick Saban will indeed be on the sidelines for the time. And those Carolina backs are, are dynamic and powerful, but for the, the Georgia-Alabama game, we got to remember, this is going to be the first time that Mac Jones is playing against a, a big-time defense, like a big-time defense and a big-time defensive play caller in Kirby Smart. And I mentioned this before, they've got a secondary that, that's played a lot of football games. Stokes and Webb in the count. Those guys have played a ton of football. And so they're going to throw a lot at Mac Jones, and they're going to make him think pre- and post-snap. And as dynamic as that pass game is, I, I think that that Georgia secondary gives them a really good feel that they can fight in that game. So backup running back Spencer Massey getting an opportunity. And again, if you missed the story earlier, of course, on Wednesday, it was the news of college football that Nick Saban had tested positive for COVID-19. But the SEC protocols then say get tested each of the next three days. And as long as the tests are 24 hours apart, once you receive three negative tests, you have no symptoms, and Nick Saban was asymptomatic the entire time. SEC guidelines then says, well, that was a false positive. And he got three negative tests each of the next 24-hour periods following his positive. And so he'll be on the sideline for Alabama tonight. How about Massey? on what very well might be the final play of the game. Well, three seconds, he gets knocked out, but he is going to find his way into the box score with a big run. I'm sure it's a great moment for him. Big time showing for Clemson today, showing that they are the number one team in the country, led by two Heisman front runners. Outstanding 70, performance. 73-7 to 7 is the final. Clemson over Georgia Tech. Coming up next on ABC, it's college football scoreboard. Devin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, and Booger McFarland are standing by. More football after that. Thanks for watching. As we say so long from Atlanta. Bob, Dan, Mark.